In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing allows us to test an idea, or in other words, a hypothesis, about the value of the population parameter. So to better illustrate this idea, let's think about two basic examples. So for the first example, let's consider a bias coin. So a bias coin here. And then for the other example over here, let's consider a bias dice. Okay, or die, depending on which singular form you prefer to use. So if we start off with a bias coin here, well, for a regular fair coin, what we'd expect then is the probability of getting heads is equal to the probability of getting a tails. Okay, so they're both going to be 0 0.5 in probability. Okay, now if we think that the coin is biased, what we'd expect then, say that we think tails is biased here, is we'd expect the probability to be greater than 0 0.5. We're more likely to get tails than we are heads. Okay, so the first thing we should always do here for a hypothesis test is present the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So for the null hypothesis, the, the notation that we use in here is we present this as h0, this h0 here. Now the parameter in this case would be the probability. So that's going to be p. And for the null hypothesis here, so for h0, this is the hypothesis that we assume to be correct. Okay. So what we'd expect here is the coin is just a regular fair coin. So in that case, we'd expect the probability here to be equal to 0.5. Okay, like we said, this is the null hypothesis. Let's just write this down here. Like we said, this is what we assume to be correct. And then what we have here for H1 is the alternative hypothesis. So H1 here, again, It'll be the same parameter, so that would be p. Now in this case, if we're looking at a bias coin, and like we said, we're assuming that um, tails here is bias, and like we said, we'd expect the probability here to be greater than 0 0.5. Okay, and like we said, this is the alternative hypothesis. So again, let's just make a note of this here. Now, what I've got here, is what we call a one-tailed test. So this is an example of a one-tailed hypothesis test. So let's just make a note of that here as well. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail here about a one-tailed test because that's what we're going to cover in the next video. But there's another way to present a one-tailed test as well. Okay, so what you'll notice here is H0, in this case the parameter is P, the probability, and that's equal to some value. And that's always the same for a null hypothesis, so it's always going to be equal to some value. Now with a one-tailed test, this can be different. So it might not necessarily be strictly greater than, it can also be strictly less than. Okay, so I just present another one-tailed test here. Let's say I've got H1, again, same parameter P, and this is strictly less than, say, 0 0.25. Okay, this is also an example of a one-tailed test. Okay, now what we also have is a two-tailed test. So we can also have a two-tailed test, so again, H0 will be the exact same um, format. It'll be the probability, in this case, P, and it will be equal to some value. Now for H1, for a two-tailed test, let's present this here. Again, if I just use the same parameter, P, what we say for a two-tailed test is that this is not equal to some value. Okay, so I might say 0 0.4. Okay, like I said, this is an example now of a two-tailed test. That is a two-tailed hypothesis test. Let's just highlight those. That's for a two-tailed hypothesis test. Again, H0 will always be the same format, but H0, if in this case, if we're looking at the probability, say we're looking at a binomial distribution, that would be N and P. Well, in that case, then we'd use the parameter P, and we'd always say that it's not equal to for a two-tailed test. And then for a one-tailed test, like you can see here, there's two ways to present that. It will either be strictly greater than or strictly less than, okay? But in either case, H0 will be this format. Okay, the only thing that will change is the probability here. So, like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail here about a one-tailed test and a two-tailed test. We're going to cover that um, in the next couple of videos. So the next video is on one-tailed tests, and then the one after that is two-tailed tests. Okay. So, how do these tests work? Well, what we do here <clears throat> is we consider a cutoff point. Okay. So let's say we're flipping this coin, right? Now let's say we flip it 150 times. So again, I'm going to use x here to represent um, our variable here. 
or is our variable of choice. It would be binomially distributed. And in this case, then n would be the number of times that we flip it, which would, would be 150. My probability here would be this value, it would be a half on 0.5. Okay, because that's what we'd expect for a regular fair coin. So in that case, then we need to consider a cutoff point. So let's say, I don't know, 120 tails. Okay, if we get more than that, so let's say we get 121 tails, then what we'd say is we have a significant result. And in that case, we would reject H0. In other words, we're taking H1 to be true here. So what that would suggest then is we have evidence to suggest that the coin is biased. This is an important distinction here, and be careful that you don't take this as definitive. So what we're doing here is we're suggesting that there is evidence that the coin is biased. We can't say for definite that the coin is biased. What we say here is um, we have evidence to suggest that the coin is biased. So that's the important distinction here. Do take note of that. We can't just say for um, definite that the coin is biased. Okay, and the same would be true for the dice example over here. We only have evidence to suggest that the, the dice in that case would be bias. Okay. So obviously we've got a value less than 120. Then what we'd do is we'd accept H0. Okay, we'd say that the coin would be a fair coin um, and there's no evidence to suggest that the coin is bias. Okay. So that's important. Do take that on board. Um, like we said, the key point there is there is evidence to suggest that the coin is bias. Okay. So if we take a look at the, bi the bias dice now, can't speak anymore, we just cut this off a little bit over here. Then again, it's the same idea, okay? So for a dice, we've got six faces on the die. So what I'd say here is my H0, my null hypothesis then. Well, again, we could model this as a binomial distribution where we'd be looking at the probability of P. If I'm suggesting that say getting a one here is bias, okay? So we're more likely to get one than any other face on the die. In that case, we'd say that the probability here is equal to 1 over 6. That's what we'd expect for a regular fair die. And then for the alternative hypothesis here, H1, again, it'll be the same parameter, so it'll be P. But in this case, if we think it's bias and more likely, then we say that this is greater than 1 over 6. Okay? So again, this would be an example now of a one-tailed hypothesis test. It's important that you can also recognize when we have a one-tailed test and a two-tailed test. Again, I'm not going to go into detail in this video. We're going to cover that in the next video. But just so you're aware, um, remember, a one-tailed test is going to be strictly greater than or strictly less than, and a two-tailed test would be not equal to. So this is a one-tailed test there. Okay. That pretty much covers it. If I just go back to this point then on the cutoff point, this leads us to our significance level. So this would be the significance level here. If we just do this as a finishing point for the significance level. Now we use the Greek letter to represent the significance level here, and that is alpha. Okay. So again, we're going to take a look at that in more detail in the next video where we actually start performing these hypothesis tests. Um, but for the significance level, you don't have to worry about um, finding that yourself. That will be given in the question. Um, so any kind of exam style question that you're looking at will always be given the significance level okay but like i said we'll go into that in more detail in the next video okay so that's our introduction there to hypothesis testing and that brings the end of this video in the next video we're going to take a look at performing one-tailed hypothesis tests